Welcome back to Chemistry Matters and our experiment on smog. Now that you've completed your investigation, let's share our results and see if we can use the data to answer the investigation's question. Which of these two gases, nitrogen dioxide or dinitrogen tetroxide, is responsible for the brown color of smog? Of course, you'll need to analyze your results and construct an explanation that's supported by data. Let's head back to our classroom to see how our students did with this experiment. All right, everyone should have completed their investigation and have their data organized and ready to share. So let's start with you two. Well, we recorded the color of the gases in the tube at negative 79 degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, and 100 degrees Celsius. And we found that the gas mixture was a darker shade of brown at higher temperatures. But there was always some brown, even in the dry ice. So that means there was more of the brown gas at higher temperatures. Interesting. How about you? How did your experiment turn out? We got a paint chart like this for shades of brown and compared it to the color of the gas mixture at different temperatures. We observed the color at five different temperatures, zero degrees Celsius, 25 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees Celsius, 75 degrees Celsius, and 100 degrees Celsius. Just like them, we also found that the gas mixture was a darker brown at higher temperatures. Okay, great. So you both found this trend where the brown gas was present at higher temperatures. And that's definitely an important part of our data analysis. Let's use that trend along with the information that we learned about equilibrium and Le Chatelier's principle previously, and let's see if we can identify which gas is brown. And this is where we analyze our data and explain the trends that we saw and our conclusions. And remember that we want our conclusions to be based upon our data and what we've learned previously about equilibrium. So let's look at the reaction in our data tables while we discuss our conclusions. And remember, you need to base your arguments on the data that you've collected. So you both found that the brown gas increases at higher temperatures. How can we use that finding along with our knowledge of equilibrium to determine which of these two gases is the brown one? Since a reaction of NO2 to make N2O4 is exothermic, heat can be thought of as a product. So when you add more heat, which is like adding more product, the equilibrium makes more reactant to reestablish equilibrium. And when the equilibrium shifts toward the reactant, we make more NO2. Since the gas mixture turned darker brown when we heated it, the reactant NO2 must be brown. Excellent explanation. So let's try to relate temperature to the equilibrium constant. Do you think that the equilibrium constant for this reaction is going to be larger at lower temperatures or will it be larger at higher temperatures? And I'll get you started on this one. A good place to begin would be to write out our equilibrium expression based off of the balanced equation. And remember that an equilibrium constant is equal to the concentrations of the products divided by the concentrations of the reactants. I think I get it. We just found out that there's more of the brown gas, NO2, at higher temperatures. When you look at the equilibrium expression, NO2 is in the denominator. So more NO2 means that the KQ will get smaller at higher temperatures. That's right. So our reaction is exothermic, so we can think of heat or energy added as being a product. And so when we increase the temperature, the equilibrium is going to be disturbed. And Le Chatelier's principle predicts that the reaction is going to shift away from the disturbance, and in this case, it's going to make more reactant until the equilibrium can become reestablished. So Anna, can you try and explain what would happen to the equilibrium if we were to remove heat, or in other words, cool the reaction? Let's see. When we cool the reaction, heat's being removed. And since that's a product in our reaction, removing it means the equilibrium is disturbed. So the reaction would make more products and more heat to replace what was lost. Is that right? That's exactly right. So let's summarize our conclusions. The conversion of brown NO2 to N2O4 was favored at low temperatures. And NO2 is a brown gas that's favored at high temperatures. And that's why we see smog on hot summer days. The high temperatures shift the equilibrium towards NO2, the brown gas. Excellent. So you've all done a wonderful job of conducting your experiments, analyzing your data, and drawing conclusions. And as a final challenge, I would like you to try to represent the effect of temperature on this equilibrium by drawing a visual model. So your model should show what happens in this reaction at the molecular level. And the model should explain with images why NO2 is favored at high temperatures and why N2O4 is favored at low temperatures. And there are no right or wrong ways to do this. Draw a model and use your imagination. We'll take a break here and let you work on the models our teacher just mentioned. 
When you finish drawing your model, rejoin us for the last segment of our equilibrium unit to compare and discuss those models.